I'm the presiding judge, like you said, of the Jefferson County Family Court in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm going to draw my testimony from my 15 years of experience as a lawyer and as a judge handling delinquency and dependency, child abuse and neglect cases. I'm here to ask you specifically to reauthorize the JJDPA with an elimination of the VCO exception because I believe it's morally wrong, and I believe it's physically, with an F, wrong. A status offense, like you said, is an offense committed by a child, which, if committed by an adult, would not be an offense. It's not a criminal offense. It's running away. It's truancy. It's things that should, children shouldn't do, but it's not a criminal offense. Federal law already prohibits the incarceration of children for committing status offenses. However, there is a provision, there's an exception called the violation of the valid court order exception. I would typically take that type of a child as a judge and I would place that child on probation. And, and Chairwoman McCarthy, unlike you referenced, I might incarcerate that child for any violation of a court order, not just the commission of a new offense. I would oftentimes order a child to properly conduct themselves and a violate whatever that means and a violation of that order could result in incarceration. I know I'm not the only judge out there who has done it. I know that it's rampant throughout the state of Alabama and throughout the country. I would put those children in jail. Professor Sherman mentioned detention and Chairwoman, you mentioned detention. I think a better word is jail. I've attached a couple of photographs to my written testimony, and I think that sums up what these children throughout the country face. They're sitting in a cell with cinder block walls, with bars, with a stainless steel toilet with no lid, with a bed, with a mattress that may be two or three inches thick, and that is a jail. That's not a detention center. I want to mention one child in particular that I placed in a detention center, in a jail, and her name was Katie. Katie first came to me when she was about 11 years old. Her mother filed uh, a beyond control petition, an ungovernable petition, because Katie had been drinking, Katie had been smoking, Katie had been doing some things that 11 year olds shouldn't do. Well, in all of my infinite wisdom, I placed this child on probation and ordered her, among other things, to properly conduct herself. Well, Katie didn't properly conduct herself and subsequently spent one of the next four years, spent an entire year in a juvenile prison, in a juvenile correctional institution. That didn't solve Katie's problems. What we found out after the fact was that when Katie's mother filed that petition, Katie was being sexually abused by her brother, stepbrother, who lived in the home with Katie and was currently abusing her. Katie's parents didn't do anything to stop the sexual abuse. My incarceration of Katie didn't solve Katie's problems. I shouldn't have had that option, and it's that simple. Katie doesn't just live in Alabama. Katie lives in New York, and she lives in New Hampshire, and she lives in Tennessee, and she lives in Texas. She lives in Pennsylvania, and Illinois, and Virginia, and every, in every one of the 50 states, and in many of those 50 states, the judges have the authority to incarcerate those children under the, under the valid court order exception. What I'm asking this committee and Congress to do is do what New York State has done, Chairwoman, and that is take that option off the table for us judges take away the easy way out. Don't let us incarcerate those children. It costs approximately $150 per day to incarcerate a child in a detention center in the state of Alabama. It costs closer to 200 as a national average. It costs much less to use one of the alternative programs that the professors have talked about and will talk about and you have better results. Finally, I want to I add 
that what I'm discussing is 99 percent philosophy. It, we didn't make these changes because we were ordered to in Birmingham. We came to realize that what we were doing was wrong. Like I said, it was expensive, it was morally wrong, and it took a change in court philosophy. We realized that when we locked up those kids, they met criminals, which they weren't in that detention center, and we realized that we reinforced the belief that they were worthless. We wanted to stop being part of the problem and start being part of the solution. I would ask this committee to vote in favor of reauthorization with the elimination of the VCO. I would ask the committee to support improvement in the conditions of confinement for those kids who do have to be incarcerated. And I would ask the committee to support the collection and analyzation of data, because if we don't know what we are talking about, then we don't know what we need to do. And that can only be done with data.